workplace fears. Will Gen Z be hardest generation to manage? Let's talk about that this morning with workplace culture specialist Bobby Albert. Good morning, Bobby. Nice to have you with us. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be on your show. We talk about Generation Z. Exactly who are who are the people in Generation Z? Well, uh, they're the ones that were born between the mid nineties and in the year two thousand, and so they uh, they're the ones that are just now entering uh, you know the workforce. But you know, today it, it is uh, we live in a uh, a time where there's uh, it's a brave new workplace and what what i'm talking about you've got these boomers on one end and and millennials on the other end and the millennials are the ones that are growing very you know very rapidly and then you got these generational z's that are just kind of inching into the workplace and one of the things in this brave new workplace is the warp speed of change occurring due to technology. Mm. And one thing that the, the millennials uh, bring into the workplace, and especially the Generation Zs, uh, as they begin to come into the workplace, the, the Generation Zs, their life is technology. So uh, they, they bring into the workplace uh, uh, skills, uh, uh, competencies, uh, ways of doing things and, and different ideas of what can be done that can really help their employers if their employers will embrace them and engage them. Yeah, the, the management's going to have to be open-minded about this stuff because uh, I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a boomer, and uh, my two, I've got two grandsons now who are just starting to enter the workplace and uh, they're not bringing a lot of, they're both working in retail, so it's a little bit different. But uh, yeah, there's a, uh, I had a conversation with a young man here the other day who was doing, he was going to do some weekend work here. And we had a conversation that I felt like we almost didn't speak the same language. But at the end of the day, you know what happened, Bobby? I said, you know, I'm the old guy. You, I got to take it literally. I, and he understood completely. He was, he was right in there, a guy in his early 20s. So, you know. Maybe they're going to compromise a little bit with us old timers too. What do you think? Well, I tell you, you know what's really going to be needed in the workplace. You know, it, it's interesting that uh, our, there's something in our culture we want to uh, put everybody in silos, regardless of generation or race or religion or uh, what country you might have come from. You know, all those kind of things. And it's like. There's something in our society that it's like I don't uh, talk, I don't interact with people in those other silo. I'll just say I'm more comfortable in my own silo. But one thing that this is this brave new workplace is that people are people. Regardless of what generation you come from, each employee are looking for some basic things out of their employer. In other words, do you care for me? Do I even belong here where I fit? Uh, can I contribute toward the goals of this organization? Does this company stand for something? And do you even create a learning environment so I can do the best job I can do? Yeah. Well, it sounds to me like you're saying, let's just get back to the basics here. You sit down with the, your your other, your fellow employee or prospective employee, and you look them in the eye, and you just start talking to them. And if, if, you do, or if you're honest with each other, pretty soon you'll figure it out. What do you think? Yeah, well, this is where it, everything rises and falls on leadership. So it takes the employer to inject leadership and engage all of the employees, have them all participate toward the decision-making process, uh, whatever that may be required, and, and getting people to connect with each other, not just communicate to them. And when you do so, you'll find... What I've seen, I saw it in my own company, and where I see in other companies, people thrive, and then the profits soar. All right. Bobby, thank you for being with us. We appreciate your time and your, and your expertise this morning. That is Workplace Culture Specialist Bobby Albert. Workplace fears. Will Gen Z be hardest generation to manage?
The new generation is heading for your office with Gen Z starting to enter the workforce. Born between the mid-90s and early 2000s, they're nearly millennials, but not quite. Workplace culture specialist Bobby Albert joins us live with more. Good morning, Bobby. Good morning. I enjoy being on your show this morning. Yeah, good to have you. April and Ed here in Denver. I know it's kind of lame to stereotype an entire generation, but are there some common themes and maybe the work ethic and personalities of these kids? Well, you know, the uh, they you know, they they do need a chance to mature and gain more life experiences and things like that. But one thing that uh, you know, today we live in this uh, at a time where there's it, it's a brave new workplace where you've got the boomers at one end, the millennials at the other end that are growing very rapidly as far as their number count in the workplace. And then the Generation Zs are just now inching into the workplace. But one thing uh, to keep in mind about this brave new workplace is that at warp speed, change is occurring, and it's driven by technology. And one thing that the millennials bring to the workplace, and especially the Generation Zs, because their whole life is technology, is they, they bring a skill set. They bring a, a, a level of competence. They bring uh, ideas of how to use the technology that employers really should embrace and engage those people uh, so that uh, they can see their profits really do well. You got millennials, Generation Z, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You think real turf wars might develop in the workplace? Well, exactly. Uh, I'm not saying I approve of it, but that's what's going to happen. There's something in our culture, our society today, that we want to put everybody in silos, you know, in generation silos, in uh, race or religion or even what type of, you know, which country you came from, you know, whatever it is. And there's something in our in our society that I want to stay in my silo because it's comfortable. I feel secure here, and I, you know, I don't want to really talk to those people that are in that other silo. In fact, I I'm not even sure if I even like them. <laughs> but what it takes is in the workplace, everything rises and falls on leadership, and it takes the leader of the organization to engage the employees. Uh, and so that where people will thrive and profits will soar and give these people in a collaborative way to participate in the decision making. Mm -hmm. Bobby, we've got to run at that. Thanks for the time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Workplace culture specialist Bobby Albert, as long as they respect their elders and stay off my lawn. <laughs> <it's all> <laughs>
and embrace these uh, Generation Zs. Now, these Generation Zs, their whole life is technology. Yeah. And they bring in a skill set, a, a, uh, a competence, um, a, a, a knowledge base that is definitely needed in, in the workplace. But can I get back, you know, getting back to your question is that we tend to, you know, there's something in our culture about putting everybody in silos. And when we do that, it's like we can't talk to each other. Or we don't work together with each other. We, we're we divided, you know, and we complain about all the other ones that are in the other silos and all <laughs> those kind of things. And and But there's one thing uh, in the workplace is that people are people. Right. In other words, no matter what generation in the workplace is that the employers that will engage their employees in this brave new workplace will find that if they do that, uh, not only will their people thrive, but their profits will soar. So really, it's about learning who they are, whether they are these millennials or these Z folks, and working towards it and working towards the goals of the company. Yes, you know, you again, that's a very good comment you made there because uh, many, many uh, people in the organization, especially leaders, many communicate, but very few connect or encourage their people to to connect. And with this thing about people or people, every employee, they're looking for, do you care for me? Do, do I belong? In other words, do I fit in this organization? Can I contribute to the goals of the organization? Does this company stand for something? And do you create a learning environment so I can do the best job I can do? Every, No matter what generation you are, everybody has that desire. You, you know, know, it's absolutely true. I was just going to ask about the, you know, risk-taking, because it used to be that, you know, the, yep. the people who took the most risk would oftentimes reap the most reward. But what happens when everyone takes the risk? Because I see it at all levels of the job, whether you're making $20,000 a year, fifty dollars or $100,000 a year, people, I think, are willing to take a little bit more risk and don't really care about working somewhere for 20 or yeah. 30 years. <laughs> Well, it, it, it comes down to the it, everything rises and falls on leadership. And the leader uh, has to create a culture where that it, people clearly know who they are. In other words, their core values. They know the purpose. Why does this company exist? Uh, the vision, in other words, where do we want to go? What, what are, where do we want to be? And can I uh, participate uh, in a collaborative way toward the uh, decision-making process of this organization, even though the leader still has to make the final decision? Uh, but when you create that, people are willing to take risks because they know what the boundary lines. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in sports. There's always a boundary line of some type. And But in between the boundary lines, you have the freedom to do whatever you want to do. Bobby Albert, some great information this morning. We have to wrap up for time there, but really great insight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great morning. You too. New survey from AppRise, a prize, mobile, uh, and employee communication solutions app revealing that one-third of managers believe that the next generation they need to handle, uh, Generation Z, that would be the kids born between 1990s, mid-90s to 2000s, latest generation to hit the workforce, some believe that generation might be more difficult to handle. Survey results showing that one out of four respondents. <laughs> or difficult than what? Uh, uh, millennials? Millennials. <laughs> That's the post-millennial generation. <laughs> Survey thinking, saying that one out of four respondents think communicating with Gen Z will be difficult compared to the slightly older generation. One out of three respondents expect to have the problems training this new generation. And we welcome back Bobby Albert, workplace culture specialist. They're all human beings, Bobby. Yep. There's got to be a common thread to exactly. dealing with every single individual, brother, so you go for it. 
Okay, well, thank you. And uh, you really hit on it is that people are people. But we do live in uh, a time where there's a brave new workplace. You've got these boomers on one end, and you've got the millennials in the, at the other end. And there are, you know, the millennials, the number of them in the workplace is growing very rapidly. And then you got this, uh, uh, they're just now waiting in the wings. The <laughs> yeah, is the Generation Z. Thank you, sir. And, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but, you know, one of the things about this brave new workplace is that at warp speed of change in technology. And one thing is that is very helpful about the millennials and especially this Generation Z because this is their life. It's technology. Mm. And they are going to bring into the workplace a level of skills, a competence, uh, ideas that that an organization truly needs to tap into that. So there's even going to be less talk, less conversation, less eye, count, eye contact than we're already seeing with the millennials, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, one thing, uh, and you all kind of touched on it, is that uh, many people uh, communicate, but few connect. And, and one thing that is a challenge for the employer is to make sure they engage all these people uh, in a way that people thrive and profit soar. You know, we live in this culture. There's something in our culture that we want to put everybody in a silo, these certain mm -hmm. generations or this race or this religion or background or country they came from. We just want to separate everybody. And it's like, uh, well, don't, you know, I, uh, you know, that silo, I'm not part of that silo. And so I don't like them and I, I'm not going to talk Clicks to them. I'm and tribes and yeah, that doesn't work yeah. in the workplace. Yeah, it, it does it. So the challenge in this brave new workplace is that people, people are people and bring people together to collaborate on the decision making process because every employee coming to work every day, no matter what generation uh, they are, they're looking for, do you care for me? Uh, do I belong here? In other words, do I fit? Can I contribute toward the goals of the organization? Does this company stand for something? And do you create a learning environment that I can do the best job I can? And it doesn't matter what generation, uh, because that's what every employee is looking for. Well, just a real quick question, Bobby. Um, we're at the end of the alphabet here. What comes after Gen Z? <laughs> Well, you're probably going to have to start over again, you know. It may be the alpha group or something, you know. It so. is the end of all time. That's it. We're approaching the end of all time. Well, just uh, the survey did specify at the end that uh, Generation Z, more than all generations, they do have a, a tech knowledge advantage. And so you take you capitalize on that. I'm thinking you harness that. You capitalize on that and, and give them duties that are suited for that. And as you said, Bobby, you make sure that all your employees, they they believe or they feel that they have a say in where we're steering the ship. That they all feel that they they are part of something special, part of part of something bigger than themselves. And um, in the end, you give the the little nerds the opportunity to go fix the uh, the baby boomer HR director's computer, and she can bake some brownies and cookies and keep everybody happy. Everybody likes cookies and brownies. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby Albert, for joining us on Seven Ten K U R V.